Hello everyone, I am Nifesi Ayo and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to be reacting to the movie The Perfect Arrangement. Earlier when I saw the movie, I wanted to review it, but I realized that personally, I enjoy reacting to the movie. That way, I can give you spoilers and that is why I now hold off you know, for a while before I react to any movie once it comes out in the cinema, giving every other person the time to see it so that it can be more, you know, um, interactive in the comment section. You can tell me what you think about the movie and I won't be spoiling this movie for at least the majority of people, you understand. So yes, let's get right into the movie perfect arrangement it is an ink blood production and it starred miss dsf sharon oja bovi uboma the comedian pere bibi niger um ex housemate it featured debo adebayo who you might know has mr macaron the movie perfect arrangement is a rom-com about Tade, a young entrepreneur who is in love with two brothers in a bid to solve big family issues she comes up with an idea that could potentially backfire in a big way and hurt lots of people in the process it is directed by chinanza onuzo Basically, that's what the movie is about. Sharon Oja is in love with two brothers, played by Bovi and Pere Uboma. I'm going to start this by, I'm uh, sorry, Bovi Uboma and Pere. I can't pronounce Pere's last name. Okay, so I'm going to start this um, by talking about the storyline because you know that that is what is most important to me in almost every movie now it feels like this movie feels like an idea that they just started to go with the flow and just make it into a movie and it's not properly developed they just decided to you know as it goes <laughs> let's just as as the movie proceeds or as the shooting process let's add this information and this detail here and there so it wasn't really coincide bearing this in mind let's talk about the characters the problem with the story is the storyline and these guys can only do what the director wants them wants them to do they can only do as much as the scripts will allow them to do they can't really put in range if they are not supposed to you know have range in that movie sharon oja is an okay actress as i mean on a norm but this movie kind of gave us such underwhelming performance for the main character that it just seemed a little bit off every other person you know every other cast in this movie just feels a little bit off bovi is a fav is one of my favorite persons i mean as a person i really love him but I would put bias aside and just say that I feel like someone else could have played the role of Chidi, his character. Someone else would have played that role a little bit better. I don't know who now, but I honestly feel like Bobby did not really body that role. I don't know if it's as Bobby's acting or if it's because of the scripts, you know. It's just, there's just some off chemistry there. Also, the relationship between Chidi, who is Bobby, and his younger brother, Pere, in the movie made no sense. And I'm going to talk about Pere. I'm going to talk about Pere now. Pere was just, in this movie, is a good actor. Take away from this particular movie. Pere has shown that given the right um, characters, given the right plot, it can really deliver. But this movie gave him such an underwhelming performance. And for somebody who is such an integral part of the whole story, his character was so scarce and so underdeveloped that there were a lot of plot holes, there were a lot of holes that could have made his character more wholesome, but we didn't see that. You don't just give us, oh, Sharon Oja is in love with two brothers, she's kissing this and kissing that. Basically, that's just what they wanted to give us. Every other thing was not really important to them in this movie. So that's what happened with um, Perez's character. Now, two persons really embodied this role, and that will be Wofai. Wofa is an actress, comedian, Wofa and Mr. Macaroni. Mr. Macaroni, like I mentioned, can only do as much as the scripts will let them do, as much as the director will let them do. But he really brought um, such a very serious performance because his character is this person that is so serious, only bothered about the family business and things like that and looks down constantly on Sharon Oja, which is what I feel like Sharon Oja was trying to make up for when she decided to bring up that very ridiculous arrangement. They made title this perfect arrangement, but it's just Sharon Oja coming up with a very ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous um, arrangement and everybody seemed helpless and accepted what she brought to the table. It's just like, is she, is she just a walking time bomb? She's just somebody walking and constantly making bad decisions as you would see as the movie progressed. Uh, progressed. So, 
Where was I? Um, Debo embodied his role. What five father did well, and that was what enabled the, the chemistry between herself and Sharon Oja, who played her best friend in that movie. So that was really also beautiful to say. Miss DSF, you will see her in a character that she typically does not do. She was the, you know, very responsible housewife, wife to Tade's older brother, Mr. Macaroni. She was the housewife, really um, passive, really level-headed something i mean she was wearing boo-boos and all of those things all through this movie i was like okay i like uh them casting miss dsf of all the casting i think that of miss dsf is one that i love the most because they put her in my opinion in a place where um, she typically will not be casted you know so i like that the type casting in hollywood i feel like they are beginning to you know diversify roles for certain persons and i'm here for that now, the father and mother, Funtra Adeolu is phenomenal. I've always loved him since I was a child in Yoruba movies. He's phenomenal, but his wife, I'm not like his acting is phenomenal, but like as an actor, phenomenal. But in this movie, everybody just gave on uh, underwhelming performances. But his wife was the most, I mean, she is the most passive housewife I've ever seen. The most passive mother, the most, how? African mother, I don't want to know how exposed you had. There are some things that an African mother would not take from you. There are some situations that will happen an African mother will step in. Like when Tade and Debo were going at it, you know, really hard. And they were just sitting there looking at them. Like typically, no African household is can't hold anywhere. She was she was too passive throughout the movie. It's just like, just let's say she ha he has she he has a wife. It's it just did not make sense, in my own opinion. Overall, the chemistry between all of the characters did not make a lot of sense which is as a result like i mentioned of the storyline itself and the poor development of the plot i think like that is what caused that in the movie overall but despite all of this you will definitely be entertained by this movie honestly this is a movie made to entertain no deep church like i mentioned earlier they just got an idea decided to go with the flow put people together and made a movie so it's just made to entertain you it's just made for you to laugh there were a few chuckles and all that in the theater when i was seeing the movie and that's thanks to wofai father and sharon oja wofai is a phenomenal actor i don't know if i've mentioned that but let me say it again she is really good you know thanks to wofai and sharon we actually chuckled a little bit in the in the cinema so it wasn't like so bad not like it. it's not a bad movie it's something that you will enjoy just go there like i mentioned every you know, nigerian movie just go there open to be entertained open to not um to not be to not get suspense you know even a movie that's supposed to be suspenseful is usually i know what's going to happen you know so don't go there expecting to be wild just go there expecting to have a good time just to relax maybe you're stuck in traffic if you're in lagos you're stuck in traffic and you don't want to know sit down there just go to the nearest wherever near you if the movie is still showing by the time you're watching this sit down there see the movie let them make money because ultimately that's the goal for them to make money you have to pay produce the producers have to pay you know cast members royalties and all of those things so yeah that's what the movie is about it's supposed to be which is why you wouldn't really see people shout the movie like that like that it's not one that you want to go back to see but just one that while you're seeing it you're not going to be bored basically you're going to enjoy it while you're seeing it so yeah that makes sense you'll be able to overlook all of the little little plot holes and how the old the whole story did not come you know together at the end of the day um now having said all of those things about the storyline about how you still enjoy it let me also mention that there are lots of drone shots in this movie and it's just like why but i mean it's not overall bad and it makes up the the cinematography i mean let me just say post-production basically makes up for the drab story drab for lack of better word storyline because post-production crew did it did it like they did a very good job color grading nice sound effects nice yes it's post-production did amazing so you would have to overlook that i mean you have to overlook the story because you will enjoy what you see location guys beautiful beautiful locations showed a little bit of culture because when went to Kuta, they showed us a little more rock you know so you would see things that would keep you entertained in the course of the movie that's why it's not a terrible movie and which is why i'll be rating this movie six out of ten because we can't 
take away or overlook the efforts you know that they have put into this movie to make it a body of work you can't take away the effort of post-production team members i mean i feel like these guys deserve some kudos what they did with the movie at the end of the day for us to be able to enjoy it in the cinema despite the few shortcomings that this movie have so i'll be rating it a six out of ten in conclusion guys i think the title perfect arrangement should be reconsidered <laughs> you know i mean just like youtubers you know click bits and give you titles that make you want to click on the video i think that is what the perfect arrangement basically is because there was no perfect arrangement the arrangement was so flawed and it wasn't like it was arranged by some other person you know from the title you'd think that okay, maybe a family you know wants something to happen between their children blah 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 but this is Sharon just coming up with a very 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 ridiculous idea in my opinion and her parents just flowed with it so it's like um it's not a perfect arrangement maybe it's sarcasm though like, it could be sarcasm maybe not clickbait it could be sarcasm i will give that to them the title really makes a lot of sense character storyline character development storyline just there so yeah guys that's what i think concerning the movie the perfect arrangement i want to hear from you in the comment section which of the characters did you enjoy the most if you've seen a perfect arrangement if you do not agree with what i've said i also want to know in the comment section if you do agree however let me know in the comment section subscribe to this channel click on the bell icon to be notified when we have new uploads for you to watch i'll see you in the next one guys ciao